Welcome back to another Random Bits. In this one I'm going to show you how to create a mute button for your Kudo game. So what we have here on screen is the game that Bracky's created in his excellent tutorial. I'll put a link down in the description. And to that game I have added a canvas layer with a button on it. That button I have labeled mute and I've just changed its font and its size. And about the only other thing I did that's special is I changed its focus mode from click or all to none. And that's just to avoid the button getting toggled when you press the space bar for jump. The other thing that I have done is I have created a script on the game node and I have taken the button and wired up its pressed signal to this on pressed button. And in my script, I'm just printing mute button pressed. So if we give that a run, we can see the game running, you move around, you can hear the sound effects going. And if I click on the button, you'll see in the console here, it says mute button pressed. All right. So if you watch the Brackies video, he would have briefly discussed the audio buses that Godot has. So if we click on this audio tab at the bottom here, you will see that he has set up a bus for the music, a bus for the sound effects, and that allows you to adjust the volumes of those two um, audio channels or buses independently. And in his tutorial, he puts the music on the music bus and connects the audio player for the sound effects to the sound effects bus. Um, and he adjusts the volume. Now, if you look at these two buses, you can see that they are both connected to master, which means the master bus controls the overall volume or output of the audio in the, in the game. So Godot provides us with a very handy object to interact with the buses, and that's called the audio server. So what we want to do basically is get hold of the master bus and then mute it or reduce its volume to zero. And we can do that through the audio server. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is actually find the master bus. And the audio server has a function on it called get bus index. And we can pass in the name of the bus that we want. I'm gonna pass in master here, which is the name of the bus down here. And that's going to return to us an integer value which is the index of the bus. So we're gonna save that away into a variable. Once the bus index is equal to that. All right, now once we have the bus index, we can use the audio server as another function on here. Very handy one, exactly what we need, which is called set bus mute. And what you do is you pass in the index of the bus that you want to mute. So in this case, we've got that stored away in the master bus index. And then the other value you pass is a true or false to say whether you want to mute the bus or not. So if we say true, that will mute the bus. So if we run that now, so we have the music playing. And if we press the mute button, the music stops and all the sound effects stops. All right, so that gets us the mute, but of course we would like this button to toggle between mute and unmute. So let's implement that. So that's pretty easy to do. So instead of always passing true, we want to pass in the opposite of whether the bus is currently muted or not. Once again, the audio server provides us a handy function, which is is bus mute, and that will return true or false if the bus is muted or not. And so we want to pass in the master bus index. And so this will return true if the bus is muted or false if it's not. And since we want to toggle it, we want to set the bus's mute value to the opposite of what it currently is. So we're going to use the not operation to toggle the boolean that we get back from the is bus mute. So if the bus is muted, the is bus mute will return true. And then we want to set the bus mute to false. And if the bus is currently not muted, so we'll get false from is bus mute, 
we want to set the bus mute to true. So it's basically going to toggle on and off every time we click the button. So if we save that now, we can press the button and we can hear the sound effects go away and the music. And if we press the button again, it comes back. Awesome. Now, the next thing we want to do is obviously change the text on this button so that it says different things when we mute and unmute. And that is very straightforward to do. What we can do is we can use this is bus mute function. And we can add a bit of logic here to say, if the bus is muted, then we want to set the text on the button to unmute. So what we need to do that is we need a reference to the button. So I'm just going to drag that in and hold control down and that will produce an on ready variable set up with a reference to the button. Now that we have the button, we can say if the bus is muted, then we want to set the button's text to unmute. Otherwise, else we want to set the button text to mute. So we run that now. Press the button, audio stops, and it says unmute. We press the button again. And the audio is back. Awesome. And then we can mute it again. And we lose the audio. Great. However, there's a little bit of a problem now that once we've run the game, if we run it again, it starts unmuted and we had left the game in a muted state. So what we really need to do is have the game remember what state the player left it in so that the player doesn't have to mute and unmute the game every time uh, they run it or mute the game every time they launch the game. Uh, what we want to do is be able to uh, persist whether the game was muted or not. And so that the game can then check that value the next time it starts up and default to the proper state. And we're going to do that by using another handy class called the config file. So before we do that though, let us split up the code a little bit into a few more useful functions. So bear with me, it'll make more sense when we rework all of the code. So firstly, we are going to grab this line here and we're going to bring it up to the top and put it in as an on ready variable so that the master bus index is set up correctly and we can use it in different places throughout our code. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function called mute audio and we're going to take a parameter which we're going to call mute it which is going to be a boolean and we're pretty much just going to take this set mute bus call and we're going to set it to the muted value. So this is a function we can now just pass in true or false and we'll typo mute it. We can set true and false and it will turn on or off the audio depending on the value of the muted parameter. The next function we want to create is um, a way of checking if we are muted or not. So we can say is audio muted and we are going to return a boolean out of that and we are going to basically return this value of this is bus muted call. So we can call return is bus muted. And then the last function we're going to create is one called toggle mute. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to call the mute audio and we need to pass true and false. And what we're going to do is pass the opposite of is audio muted. So just by calling this function, the is audio muted will return true or false, depending on whether the audio is or isn't muted. And then we're going to either mute or unmute that value by reversing it. So as before, if is audio muted returns true, then we'll set mute audio to false. And if it's returning false, then the not will make it a true and we will set mute audio to true. All right. And that means we can tweak the 
code here. So we can just say toggle mute. And instead of doing this, what we're also gonna do is we're going to create another function which we're going to call update mute button label. And we're gonna take this code out of there, put it into there and change this to is audio muted. So if the audio is muted, we're gonna change the button to unmute. And if it is not muted, then we'll change the button to mute. And then in our button press function, we can now call update mute label. All right, so we have just refactored the code a bit. Uh, if we play, we'll be back to where we were. Mute, no sound, unmute, and if we go again. All right, now we're in a position to actually persist the mute setting between runs of the game. So the first thing we're going to do is create another function that loads the current settings. And as I said, we're gonna use this config file object from Kudo. So first we're gonna create a function called load mute settings. And inside there, we're gonna create a variable called config, and it's gonna to equal to a config file dot new. So we're gonna create a new instance of a config file object. And then we are going to try load that object. So we're gonna say config dot load, and we have to give it a name for the file. Godot has a special way of referencing a folder called user colon slash slash. And that's like the default user folder and on different platforms it will be hosted in different places. So by using user colon slash slash, it will ensure that Godot will always be able to find the file or save the file into a place that we can store or save user settings regardless of the platform that the engine is running on. So we're gonna create a file called mute settings dot CFG and it's going to um, be loaded from the user folder. So the other thing is because that file might not exist, what we really want to do is we want to get hold of an error response or the error code from the load operation and see if that succeeded or not. So we can say if error is not equal to OK, uh, which is the error code. So if it's not equal to OK, then it means that something didn't load or the file didn't exist. So what we want to do is we just want to default our mute audio to false and then we can return out of the function. All right. Now, if we were able to open the file and we would get some um, configuration values back from the file, what we want to see is what is the value of the muted flag that we're going to store in the file shortly. So what we're going to do is create a new variable. We're going to call it is muted. And we're gonna say it's equal to config dot get value, which retrieves the value out of the config file object. And we need to pass in a couple of values. So the first value we're gonna pass in is what's called a section name. I'll show you this a little later, but for the moment we'll, we'll just call it audio. The next bit of information we're gonna pass in is the name of the value that we wanna store, and we're going to make that is muted. So we're gonna put the is muted value into a key called is muted and we're going to say that the default is false and that's just a fallback because if the file exists and we successfully load it um, but for some reason it doesn't have the is muted value set then we will just default is muted to false all right so now that we have that value read from the file uh, we are just going to then call our mute audio function and we're going to set it to the value that we've just retrieved all right so just to recap, we create a config file um, object. We try load the config file from this file called mute settings.config, which is stored in the uh, users folder. If we have any kind of error, we're just gonna set the mute audio to false. If we successfully read that file, then we're going to try get the is muted value out of the audio section of that file. And if we can't read that value, we will default it to false if it doesn't exist in the file. And then we're going to set our mute audio to is muted. All right. So what that allows us to now do is load those values 
But before we can load those values, we actually have to um, have something that creates or saves those values. So let's create another function called save um, mute settings. Once again, we're going to grab this and part of this. Just paste that into here. So we're going to create ourselves a config file. Then instead of config get value, we are going to call config dot set value. We're going to set the value in the audio section. We're going to set the actual value is name as is muted, which is the one we're looking for when we try read the file. And the value that we want to set it to is not false, but is the value of is audio muted. So it'll save the current state of whether the audio is muted or not muted. And then instead of doing a load, we want to do a config dot save. Okay, so we now can load some settings and it restores the is muted value and we can save the current state of the mute. So uh, let's put that together. So firstly, in our on button pressed, we're going to add a new line here. We're going to toggle the mute. Then we're going to save our mute settings and then we're going to update our mute button label. So that means every time we press the button, we're going to toggle the audio. We're going to create that file with the true or false value in it, depending on the current state of the mute. And then we're going to update our label like we were doing before. And then we have one more function, which is when the game first starts up, we need to get the audio either muted or unmuted, depending on the state when the user last pressed the button. And what we're going to do is do that in the ready function. And what we're going to do here is we're going to load the mute settings, which will restore the mute either on and off, depending on what it was last saved as. And then we're also going to update our button label so that it matches the current state. All right. So if we save that now and run, we can see we've got mute and unmute and we'll leave it muted. Um, and if we run the game again, you can see that we start in a muted state and can unmute. And if we run around, exit the game again and start the game, we now start with the audio plane. So I mute it again and exit, start the game up again. It starts with the audio muted. As I mentioned before, this folder is a special folder. It depends on the operating system and the platform you're running on as to where that is. But in Godot, if you go to your project settings, you can say open user data folder and that will open up your Explorer on your platform. I'm running under Windows and you can see that it's, it's storing it in my roaming Godot user data first game folder. And this is the file uh, that's been created by that config file class. Um, and if we open that up, you can see this is the section and this is the key and this is the current value. So we can see we currently say audio is muted equal to true. I, I can actually edit this file and put in false, save. And if we run the game now, you see it will start with the audio muted equal to false. So it's playing the audio. If I mute it again, exit out and go back to that folder. Open that file again, you can see it's now as muted set to true because I exited the game with the mute on. All right. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this, please press the like button. Please subscribe to get other videos. And the source code for this project will be available to my patrons on my Patreon. Link in the description. Cheers.